what is the best radio I could purchase in 2022 going into 2023 that's still in production? That is a loaded question. Sean, why do you have to ask these kinds of questions? They're only going to stir up controversy. Well, that's just it, Mike. Let's stir up some controversy. (laughs) Oh, boy. So I don't have an answer for you. I figured I would reach out to other amateur radio operators who do YouTube videos, and I would ask them what is the best handy talkie radio, the best mobile radio, the best portable radio, the best base station radio. Give me your input. And these are the responses I received. Uh, So best HT, in my opinion, hands down is going to have to go to Yesu with the FT5DR. This is just a beast. It's a great, great radio. It's it's built for ruggedness, you know, guys like me who are going to who are going to take it out in the field, take it hiking through the woods. You know, it's waterproof if you drop it or something, you know, in a stream, doesn't matter. It's got phenomenal audio. The speaker is incredibly loud. Uh, me and my buddy compared it with his ID52. This blew the ID52 out of the water. Uh, it's got a nice touch screen, so it's really easy to program, very easy to navigate. Uh, it charges off of 12 volts, so you can literally just plug a battery into the socket here and charge it right off of your BioNO 12 volt uh, battery or something like that. It's great. And probably the biggest reason the Yesu wins over any other HT, and I'm kind of looking at ICOM for this, the Yesu does APRS, where the ICOM ID52 does DPRS. Now, never has anybody asked me, does it do DPRS? But all the time when I do handheld reviews, I get a lot of comments about people asking, does it do APRS? So that right there seals the deal. The Yaesu FT5DR is the follow-up to the Yaesu FT3DR and is available for $419 at sites like DX Engineering, which at the time of recording has 10 of these in stock. Now the FT5DR is the follow-up to the FT3DR, so you could expect to see a lot of the same features and functionality as the FT3DR with some added features such as the primary memory group functionality, which Yezu recently announced. Mike's got some really good input on handheld radios, and I'm looking forward to hearing him in just a little bit talk about mobile radios. But for right now, let's stick on handheld radios, and let's go to Tank Radio. Tank Radio here, and I'm taking a minute to talk to y'all. I just wrapped up the happy hour with the European group on over on Jason's channel. I already finished the bourbon, but I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about HT handhelds. My handheld here is the TYT 868UV, and um, this is version one. I really like the version one, it's still going strong. The only thing I've done is to add the signal stick because um, I lost the rubber duck to it. But I really, really do enjoy this uh, radio. It has DMR built into it. This one is APRS capable, but it's a little bit of a pain to get it done. On other revisions, they made the APRS in it very, very nice and easily to turn on. And also it's Bluetooth. I know I talked to several operators already that JRE rigged somehow to use the Bluetooth in the car to work with this radio. And that's pretty cool. A lot of people do talk about code plugs being hard to program. Um, they are not hard to program. It's just Excel on spreadsheets. And it's very easy to do after you find the repeater's information. Jason Ham Radio 2.0 has a Texas DMR site for Texas and some of the other areas. They list this information so that you can enter it into your code plug. So go, go ahead and check it out. This HT is still going strong, you know, when I remember to turn it on and charge it at night. But that is my HT I choose. Thank you, Ham Radio Dude, for giving me the chance to do this. And uh, till later, y'all, go forth and conquer. Now, going into 2023, it appears as though the 868 has been discontinued. However, it looks like the Anytone 878 has replaced this model. The Anytone 878 has up to 7 watts of power. It does have 500,000 contacts that could be saved onto the radio. It does DMR and analog. It does VHF, UHF, and of course it does the APRS. It's available for $315 at the time of recording. Thanks, Tink. Now we'll go around the world and talk to LB0FI, my buddy Morton out there in Norway, to find out what his favorite HT radio is. Hi, I'm Morton, LB0 Fox India. And uh, Ham Radio Dude sent me this message where he wanted me to uh, recommend three radios for 2022. The categories are HT, HF Rig, and Mobile Radio. And uh, I actually want to do that. And I'm trying to focus this as I do on most of my videos for 
for new hams. So these aren't necessarily the best rigs. It's not necessarily the most expensive rigs, but rigs that will give you good value for money and make you learn something. So first out is the HT. And I've done a video on this HT. It's the Retivis RT85. It's a cheap Chinese HT. It's just barely more expensive than a Baofeng UV5R, but it's so much more radio. Well, it is about $30 if you want to buy it from Retivis. Uh, it's got a long battery life. It's well built. It's solid. It can take a beating. And most of all, it is clean on it, uh, its output. I got a video series on this. So if, uh, if Ham Radio Dude is nice, he'll link to that video series about that radio. I think that he's right that it's a very good entry level radio. It is clean on the spectrum. I can confirm that. And I'll link Morton's videos below as well as my video series on this radio. I didn't ask anybody to give me any specific input on any specific radios, but I do like the way this worked out by blindly asking them to give me the radio they like the best. And finally, we're going to go to Ham Radio 2.0, Jason, for his pick on the Handy Talkie radio. Hey guys, this is Jason over at Ham Radio 2.0, KC5HWB. And Sean asked me to talk about my favorite HT that is in production right now. It's a hard choice, honestly, but I think I would have to choose the, uh, the Yezu FT5D. And the reason behind this is primarily because it has an excellent audio quality, a loudspeaker, and most of all, it has true analog APRS. It's easy to program from the front panel. It does have a touch screen, which I personally could take it or leave it. I don't really care about the touch screen so much. It's got this nifty belt clip that clips to your belt that the radio snaps into. So you don't have to take the belt clip off of your belt every time and put it down there. It's a little bit easier just to push down on that button and release the radio. A close runner-up would be the Anytone AT Delta 878UV2+, Plus, the latest radio, the latest dual-band DMR radio from Anytone, which is also front-panel programmable. It does DMR. Now, this one's a Yezu System Fusion radio, and while I tend to like DMR better than Yezu System Fusion, System Fusion has been growing on me over the last year or two. There's a couple of really good networks in Texas that talk about System Fusion and leave it on digital only mode. So I enjoy talking on those networks. The Anytone radio is great too. It's got everything you need. It's actually a little bit louder speaker. It's got a bigger battery, so it lasts a little bit longer. It does true analog APRS send and receive and beaconing. But this one's just a little bit easier to program. The screen is larger, looks a little bit better, a little bit more details on the screen. And it's it's got the name of Yezu behind it. And Japanese radios are typically, typically, better made radios than the Chinese radio. So push comes to shove, it would be the Yezu FT5D. Thank you, Ham Radio Dude, for allowing me to record this video for you guys. Thank you, Jason, for coming on here and thanks for giving your input. We need more controversy. How do you get more controversy? You ask somebody, what is the best HF radio? And there's a slew of answers because there's a slew of details. Is this for portable use? Is this for home use? So forth. But let's go to Scout 75 Shane and let's see what he thinks is the best radio in current production for HF. Hey folks, my name is Shane, amateur radio call sign Kilo Delta 9, November Juliet Juliet. And a radio that's growing fast with me has been around forever, and that's the Yesu 818 QRP rig. This multi band is compact, and as you can see, you can get all kinds of aftermarket accessories for it. It's not the newest radio out there or the most feature rich, but this little baby is rugged and ideal for people who uh, want to do some off the grid type stuff, some that's on the air, what have you. It's compact size, lets it fit in this little chest pack I have with absolutely everything I need to do uh, play radio and drop stuff on the ground like that. So just a little quick, Shout out for the Yesu 818. If you want something that's rugged and can do pretty much everything, it's one that you might want to check out. At the time of recording, the Yesu FT818 ND is about $630 at most of the major ham radio vendors. The 818 is the follow up to the 817 and is capable of 160 meters through 10 meters, 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters, all band, all mode 
up to six watts, except on AM where you have up to one watt of power. The Yezu FT818 can run on batteries, or you could use an external LifePo4 battery as you saw in Shane's video. Let's go back over to Mike, K at MRD, to find out what his favorite HF portable radio is. Now, as far as mobile HF radios, there's really only two on the market. You've got the Yaesu 891 and the ICOM 7100. For me, it's, again, it goes to Yaesu for the 891. It's just uh, a, a more compact radio, so you can use it mobile, and it's a lot easier to use portable. It's not it's not hard for me to take out of my car. The, uh, the, the 7100 is a bit bigger, so it takes up more space. Uh, as far as power consumption, they're, they're pretty identical, but... Uh, the 891 is just a great, great radio. The, the, the filtering is fantastic. I get great audio reports. I've just had nothing but good times with my 891. So that's, that's why I would say that's still the winner in the HF mobile category. Not only do I think the Yaesu FT891 is a great mobile HF radio, but I also use this portable. And the one exception with the portable use is the power consumption at 100 watts could be up to 23 amps. This radio does have phenomenal digital noise reduction if you ever get that opportunity to use it, and it's good for 160 meters through 6 meters on AM, FM, single sideband, and you could do digital modes if you have something like a digi rig or a signal link. But then again, my portable use isn't the same as anybody else's portable use, so if I'm hiking a mountain, this might be a little heavier. Maybe I would look at a radio like Scout was talking about, the 818. Let's go back over to Morton to find out what his favorite HF radio currently still in production is and why. I've done my mistakes when I was a new ham. I started out with a cheap HF rig. I ended up in my first year as a ham on going through three HF rigs before I ended up with the rig I got now, which is the ICOM IC7300. It's an excellent rig. Might be a little bit on the expensive side, but it is by no means a bad radio. It's an excellent radio. It is easy to use. It's got understandable menus. It's got a waterfall. It's got 100 watts. It's got everything you need as a new ham. Currently, the ICOM IC7300 is $1,149 at most ham radio vendors, and that does include a built-in antenna tuner up to 100 watts of power, 160 meters through 6 meters, and capable running all modes. This does not require any kind of external digi rig or signal link, for FT8 operations and so forth, which makes it pretty convenient, not to mention the built-in color touchscreen with full waterfall display. For my base station of choice, I'm gonna recommend the Yezu FT991 or the one that's currently in production, the 991A. Now this is a great radio coming in around $1,250 and it is capable of not only HF, but VHF and UHF. That's 160 meters through 10 meters six meters, two meters, and 70 centimeters with the capability of C4FM and Yezu system fusion. This does have a built-in antenna tuner with a three to one match, and it does have two antenna ports on the back, one for HF and one for the VHF UHF. Has a touchscreen display, and overall this radio has phenomenal audio filtering with the digital noise reduction. Now as far as HF radios, if I had my druthers and could get anything that I wanted, it would be definitely some kind of flex. I, I've had a chance to play with them at both Hamvention and at Dayton, and they just impress me every single time I get in those booths. You know, the, the one thing you notice right away is how quiet they are on receive. They're just beautiful beautiful radios to listen to they're also beautiful radios to look at they're very sexy they got that nice high definition screen on there in the waterfall uh the accessibility in terms of like what you can do with them get that maestro you can take that maestro with you anywhere and log on to the internet and you're still playing radio with your home uh station there just they've really they've really perfected uh the art of amateur radio, in my opinion. So those are my opinions. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Sean. We'll talk to you later, 73. I have to agree with everything Mike said. I purchased my Flex Radio, the Flex 6400, in September of 2022, and approximately six weeks later, I received it. Setup was really easy. The documentation, shout out to Flex, is amazing between videos and actual written documentation. I could remotely connect to the radio without the Maestro, and that is because I have a program called Smart SDR for Windows, but I do believe they make it for Apple as well. I believe when all was said and done with an antenna tuner put into the Flex 6400, the price was around $2,900. 
And I need to thank you, Mike, and everybody else who has submitted these videos so far. This has been really fun. Now I want to go over to Mike, K9KMV, the unlucky ham, to see what he likes for a VHF UHF mobile radio. Hey guys, it's Mike here, K9KMV, the unlucky ham. So a week or so ago, Sean asked if we could send in a video telling you what our favorite radio is. So, well, I thought about it, and honestly, if you asked me this week, I could give you one answer. If you ask me next week, it might be a different answer. But uh, after thinking about it, you know, pretty carefully, I decided to pick the radio that I use pretty much guaranteed every day, which is the radio I've got in my car. It's the Yaesu FTM 300. So the reason why I picked this one, there's, a, there's quite a few reasons why I really like it. Um, first of all, is it's, it's got a very small footprint. So it comes with a separation cable in the box. So you can mount the main unit under the seat is what I've done and have the the control panel just up on the on the dashboard um, it's a pretty feature-packed radio so it has GPS and sorry GPS and APRS built in um, it's a it's a real dual band like dual VFO radio um, so they complete the VFOs are completely separate from each other so you can be monitoring one frequency maybe scanning on the other VFO however you want to kind of configure things um, it uh, has an SD card slot, so it's really nice to be able to change the programmable memories just by taking the SD card out, going inside, making the changes on your PC or your laptop at home. Instead of having to, you know, like uninstall the radio, bringing it indoors or bringing a laptop out into the car, you can just do, do it all via the SD card. So it's, uh, it's a much simpler process and uh, I, I like that for sure. Um, the other thing, like I, it's pretty easy to to set up now i do admit i came from having used an ftm 400 which is the ra this this radio's bigger brother so i was kind of familiar with the menus and the setup already but i think even without that um and even without kind of going through the manual uh you for the most part you'll be able to figure out uh how to set it up and and get things working so that's pretty good um and another point as well actually this was pretty key in my decision on putting this one in the car is that the FTM 300 does not have a touch screen. So when I'm kind of driving around the Chicago streets, bouncing around through all the potholes, which, you know, during the winter especially, we, we have, a, um, have a lot of those. Um, I like to actually be able to press a button or turn a knob physically on the radio instead of trying to make sure that I, I hit the right spot on the touch screen. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, as you're bouncing around, your finger might kind of jump as you're about to press the, the button you think you've pressed on the touch screen. Um, or you're just uh, kind of, you know, trying to get the right spot on there. But when you've got, got a physical button that you know you've pressed and clicked and everything, I, I, I like that part of the, the radio as well. So that's, that for me wins over any kind of radio with, in, in the mobile uh, with a touch screen. So I think that's all the... Uh, the reasons really why I like this radio. Again, ask me the same question next week and I might give you a different answer, but uh, but that's why I like the FTM 300. And for now, uh, it, it's it's picked as my, my favorite. So uh, over to Sean, I guess. Uh, thanks and uh, all the best, cheers. I definitely like C4FM and System Fusion. The Yaesu FTM 300 comes in at $459 at the time of recording. And I do also want to mention an underused feature of the radio is the capability of crossband repeat, the ability to transmit on either 70 centimeters or two meters and retransmit on the opposite band. And finally, on the mobile rig, and that depends kind of, do you want to use it at home? Do you want to use it in the shack? Are there a lot of repeaters nearby? Those are all considerations you got to make. But I'm focused on a cheap rig for your car and it's the Lyxen UV998. It is a cheap Chinese rig. You can get it on eBay. I've done a review on it and for what it is, it's a great rig. It's small. It doesn't consume a lot of power. It works. You'll get your QSOs with it. It's got beautiful modulation and it won't break the bank after buying the 7300. So there you go. Those are my three recommendations for radios in 2022. And if you'd like, please follow my channel or at least watch a couple of my videos. I'm sure you'll find them worth your time. Until next time, 7-3.
And of course, I'm going to put everybody's channel in the description below, but I want to know what is your favorite radio that's still in production going into 2023? Let us know in the comments below. The purpose of this video was to get different inputs from a variety of different people and see if there was a common trend, which I think there was two things. Number one, Yezu seems to be on the strong side as far as radio preferences go. And number two, I think what we saw is it really depends on what you're going to use this radio for. If you're only going to use this radio as a paperweight, get yourself one of those new Shigu G106s. That'll work great. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I do think that there's a lot of great input in these videos. And it was really nice to be able to work with everybody. So if you like this kind of video, let us know in the comment below. But again, let us know what is your favorite radio still in production. Until next time. Bye.